everybody, Joy here. We have a special guest today, but let me see, what day is it? It's Wednesday, is it the 18th? Yeah. I think it's the 18th. I'm not positive. Monday, Sunday was the 15th, 16th, yeah, it should be the 18th of May 2022. So we have a special guest. I don't know how many of you, raise your hands, how many of you have asked me to sew for him? Oh my gosh, all of you, look at that. <laughs> Finally, he put this shirt on this morning. I bought him this shirt for Christmas because it has um, patriotic or Christian things on it. But as all t-shirts, they don't fit him. You can see that it's coming up into his throat and about cutting his neck off. The difference between him and me is I can't stand that. A t-shirt that I buy at the store, a blouse that I buy at the store comes up and cuts me off at the neck too because it's always pulling backwards. Turn sideways, babe. His shirt, the seam, let me see, turn this way a little bit. The seam on the shoulder is an inch back from where it should be. It should be up here. That's where the seam on the shoulder should be. Same over here. The seam on the shoulder should be here. And so the back of his neck of his shirt should be up here. Now look, I think you can see it. When we put the back of the neck where it belongs, look at how it pulls this up. Look at all these wrinkles in here. What is this saying to us? This is saying, I need more room. And if you don't give it to me, I'm going to steal it from the front. And so it goes like this and it pulls down. See the wrinkles go away? But then, shoulder seam is way back here instead of here, and it's cutting him off on his throat. So I said to him, plus this sleeve, he likes his sleeves down to here, and this has a short sleeve, <laughs> short, too short for him. So I said, would you please let me make you a t-shirt that fits you? And what did you say? I said, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine, dear. That's fine, dear. It's my favorite saying. <laughs> That's my only saying. <laughs> yes. I asked him if he liked the fullness in the shirt, and he said yes. Great to know, Peggy Sayers version. Um, put on a shirt you like, measure it, and then make yours the same. So we know we have enough room in the hips and the chest and everywhere else. We just need to fix his round back in the shirt that we're going to make. So I'm going to show you how you figure out, does he need a quarter of an inch? Does he need a half inch? Does he need a foot? How much does he need for me to add to the back for the shirt to come down and sit where it's supposed to be? Now, turn around again, baby. One of the things you can do Peggy Sager's fashion is if you don't care about this shirt, say this was a muslin and it was just a trial garment, you can actually take a pair of scissors and cut across here. Keep this up here where it belongs. Cut. Clear across here and then pull this down till all the wrinkles are gone. Then you can tell by your gaping hole that you have there. Actually, it's not a hole, it's a, what would that be? A gaping ditch. Uh. <laughs> cut, a, a cut. How much you would actually need to fix this shirt. But since we don't have that, I'm going to show you a different way that Philly and I learned from Cynthia Guffey. Okay? You can turn around and look while I'm getting ready there. Now, years ago, I had Philly do this to me, and I came out to be one half inch. About a year ago, I had Jerry do it to me, and my goodness, I was like an inch and a quarter or something. Oh, man. So, yeah, check it often, because it's very important. If your clothes are riding back on you, now I made this top, and you can see this top isn't doing it to me. <laughs> because this top has a round back correction in it. So it's sitting on my shoulder where it's supposed to be. Is there even a seam up there? I could move the shoulder forward a little. Now, my shoulder seam being back off my shoulder, it isn't because of my round back. It's because I need to adjust the pattern for a forward shoulder. My shoulders go forward. I don't know why, but Peggy Sager said, Peggy Sager, Peggy Sager, she was on last night, every Tuesday night, you can watch her, no, every other Tuesday night, you can watch Peggy Sager's, uh, it's called Silhouette Patterns Live, look her up, she has a thousand videos, maybe more, 
teaching you what I'm trying to teach you. She doesn't teach this, though, in the way that I'm fixing to show you how to figure out how much without cutting the shirt, okay? All right, babe. Turn sideways to the camera. Step forward so you're not walking on me. <laughs> All right, we're, now don't stand up straight. Slouch. Well, slouch like oh, you always hurts do. To slouch. Slouch. Uh, that's where I'm normally. Stand right. like you normally stand. I do. I'm going to tuck your shirt in tight so we can see where you're around. Now, Jerry used to have the straightest, straightest back you ever saw. <laughs> and um, no round back at all forever and ever and ever. But 75 years old does a number on you, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is figure out where the roundness is in his back. And it looks like it goes all the way to his waist, really. Starts way up high at the neck. And I would say we could stop about here. All right, so I am doing this with a soft measuring tape. And I'm measuring from his neck down to the bottom of what I think is the curve. And it's here at 12 and a half inches. If your back caves in here, it's your shoulder blades that really stick out. You got strong shoulder blades. Stand up straight and slouch. No, you can't do both. <laughs> He's like, now you know why I never want her to sew for me. <laughs> He's laughing. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to put this tape down here where I think his curve ends. Right here. All right, that's 12 and a quarter. That's good enough. Now what we're going to do is this is a curved measurement. We need a straight horizontal metrical vertical. What? vertical. We need a vertical measurement straight up and down. So let me see. I found this little doohickey over there on my wall. <laughs> so we're going to use this to measure a straight measurement from 12 and a half inches down. I hope I don't cut him. All right, so we want that at the full. Yes, here we go. That looks pretty darn good. From there to here. Okay, so now we have a straight measurement. See it out here? Straight. Straight up and down. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to take this measurement, and this measurement comes up to 11 and 3 eighths. So we're going to take 11 and 3 eighths from, oh, I can't believe you don't need more than this, from 12 and a half. I know I said it was 12 and a quarter, but it's really 12 and a half. 12 and a half minus 11 and 3 eighths. Come on, mathematician, pharmacist, what is that? 12 and a half subtract 11 and 3 eighths is 1 and an eighth. 1 and an eighth? Yeah. Okay, so we need 1 and an eighth extra inches, and that's exactly what it looks like what he needs here. 1 and 1 eighth extra inches in order. In fact, how far back is it on your shoulder, for heaven's sakes? Hello. Here's a new way to measure it. Go from the shoulder seam to where the shoulder seam should be. It's one and one eighth. How about that? I just discovered that. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna make this shirt, babe. That's all I need, but I need your shirt. <laughs> You're gonna have to wear something else. Oh, that's fine, I got plenty of t-shirts. <laughs> one and one eighth round back correction. Now, I will make a pattern for him or find a pattern here somewhere, and then I'll show you how I'm going to do that one and one eighth round back correction. And I'm going to sew something for Jerry. How about that? I have never done this before. I helped my granddaughter-in-law, Lauren, do it once because she had a shirt she loved and I helped her do this. I've never done it. But since Jerry likes this shirt and the way it fits, I'm just going to try to make a pattern out of it. Hey, let's try it. I've got a roll of paper here. I've got the shirt folded in half. I'm going to draw center front right here. Kind of hard to do from this side. Kind of hard to do from here, but we're going to do it. Oh my goodness, I've watched um, Thoughtful Creativity. What's that little girl's name? Elisa. She is so stinking cute. My goodness, is she cute. Okay, that's center front. Here's the top of the curve. Here's the shoulder. He likes the shoulder. He wants the shoulder like that to drop off. He doesn't want it at his shoulder. All right. 
So there I've got the shoulder. I'm going to mark the sleeve. That's where the sleeve meets. It meets here and it meets here. And then I'm going to draw the side seam. This doesn't even have any seams in it, for heaven's sakes. It's one of those. Just knit it all around, is it? Yeah, there's not, e there's not even any seams in this shirt. It's so weird. Okay, and that's the bottom. And I'm going to put it here above the hem. I don't think he wants it any longer. So that's above the hem allowance. And so now, how am I going to get this right here? I'm simply going to turn it and mark it from the other side. Look here, there's that, that, that. This can't be that hard. I've seen everybody do it. Make your own patterns. I've seen girls, little oriental girls, sit on the carpet and just draw a pattern out of nothing. Like, oh my gosh, how do they do that? <laughs> now this one, I've got this roly-poly thing that makes pokey holes. So I've got one somewhere. Ah, is it this? Yes, here it is. Oh my gosh, this makes deep holes. You want to see it? Look. Deep hole duty. Yeah. So you take this and you like go through here on your paper. <gasps> it works. It works. It's doing dot to dot underneath. Oh my gosh, this is so easy. It's unbelievable. I'm going to go right in there, and this is finished. I'm marking it where it will be finished at. And I have this four layers I'm going through here. Yeah, and it goes right there. Oh my gosh, that works so good! You have to get you one of these roly polies. I'll put one in my store. It didn't go through the whole way. No, it didn't. I'll have to go through here and then raise it an eighth of an inch. Why is that? Because it's folded over in there and it's too many thicknesses. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. So cool. Okay, so I've got the front of the shirt done and I actually have the back of the shirt done too. The back of the shirt because the front and the back of the armhole, it's exactly the same. It's no different in the front. So all I have to do is show that the back comes up here. The back collar ends right there, and let's make some marks for the back neck. Oh my gosh, is this ever easy? All right, so that's the back. Then here's the sleeve, and I can easily do the sleeve separately. Let's take this off and see what we've got. So this is center front, and this is center back, heading up there. Yes, park your belly on the table. <laughs> now I'm going to go get my, my styling curve. And I'm going to mark these curves. Then I'm going to add a seam allowance. Now we don't need any seam allowance at center front. We don't need a seam allowance at center back because they're going to be on the fold. But I've got to add a seam allowance here on the side. I've got to add a hem at the bottom. I have to add a seam allowance to sew the sleeve in. And at the top I need a seam allowance to sew the, the ribbing one. Oh my gosh, how fun is this? T for Jerry. T for Jerry. One and one eighth inch round back. And it is 5, 18, 20, How about that? Awesome! Mine is called Fashion Ruler. I'll put this in my Amazon store too. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the curve that we got off the pattern. Oh boy, and it's just perfect, you guys. That's it. That's the curve we got off the pattern right there. If you don't move the ruler. And there it is. Look at that. <laughs> and you know what else I have? some half inch rulers that I'm going to put the seam allowance on with. I'll show you that in a minute. Alright, so now let's do the neck. The neck, now remember I said I was going to raise it an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to do that by guessing. Block, flip, and flop. Look, I've still got my pants. I'm still working on myself here. 
<laughs> I'm so excited Jerry's gonna let me make something for him. I've stopped all sewing for me. <laughs> and we're gonna do this for him. I am excited. Now remember, you gotta have 90 degrees. You have to have 90 degrees there. So I'm gonna use this for the 90 degree. If you don't use your 90 degree, you're gonna end up with a point, a funny point. So there's his shoulder seam, shoulder seam. Let's get some, um, let's get something to put a seam allowance on there with. All right, so this is another fashion ruler, only it's a half inch wide. So I can make the seam allowances. And there we go, half inch. Half inch, look at that. Seam allowance there. <laughs> I love it. I feel like I'm so smart when I can do something like this. But then when we get it made up and it's five sizes too big for it, <laughs> we'll see how smart I think I am then. Oh. Doesn't matter, it's a t-shirt. If it's a little bit large, it isn't going to matter. It is not going to matter. All right, one half inch. Be sure and write that so you don't take five eighths. One half inch. Seam allowance. All right. Very good. All right, so now we've got, this is the back. This is the back. We have to do the front neck. So here, how do we do the front neck? The front neck is right here where my mark is. Turn, turn, turn. And there we go. And there it is. <laughs> so the front and the back have to end right here. They have to join right there. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I made a pattern all by myself. <laughs> I'm going to have to change my name to Elisa. All right, let's draw a hem. How big is the hem? The hem is. The hem is three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. I'm just going to go ahead and make it one inch. One inch hem, why not? So there's the hem. Remember, you fold the bottom up to cut. That's straight there. This is probably straight here, too, but just in case. Very good. I'll show it to you here. I'll take the camera off and show it to you. i got to have a seam allowance up here, too, don't I? i got to have a seam allowance for the neck. Hello! you got to have a seam allowance there. So, let's put a half inch. Half inch. Everybody uses the same styling thing to make patterns. All right, there's the seam allowance on the front. Front and back. And there's your two pieces. <laughs> See there? There's the center back. Center front. That line is the center back and the center front. The center back is just higher than the center front. There's the shoulder. Seam allowance, the armhole, seam allowance, side seam, seam allowance, and the hem. So, what do you think? Huh? I am super excited. I do need to find some fabric. <laughs> Jerry wears completely different colors than I wear. I think I might look for a gray. Let's see if we can find something gray. Oh, and then I've got to put something on it with my scan and cut. Oh my goodness, yes, I've got to do that. All right, I have to go. I'll be back. Well, I've cut out my pattern piece. Now look at this. I'm going to show you a trick I learned from Judy Kessinger. The back and the front are exactly the same, except the back is higher. So I just cut the back. I cut around it, and I'm just folding it down. See? I'm going to fold it down right there. And when I cut out the front... I'll cut out the front with that folded down. When I cut out the back, I'll pop this up, and then I will cut out the back. See? Easy peasy. Very nice. Now you realize, this is a very simple T pattern. Okay? Now let's draw the sleeve. All right, remember you're gonna have two sleeves. 
So we're going to trace one and cut it out twice. Now do you see I had this folded into itself? I had this thing folded into itself. I took one sleeve and I put it inside the other sleeve and then I folded it completely smooth all the way down. Well I don't need that now because both sleeves are the same and I only need one of them. So what you want to do is figure it out because I've never done this before. Fold the shoulder seam up at the top the shoulder seam because this has to fit into the shoulder seam. Now Jerry wants his sleeve much longer than this one. This one is about 7 inches long. He wants his 12 inches long. He doesn't like short sleeves. And I agree. They look funny on a man. Unless they're going to roll them up and put cigarettes in them or something like James Dean. My husband used to smoke, you know. He did. He was a pharmacist. And somebody that he had been a pharmacist to for many years. I'm going to put this straight and call it straight of grain. Is what I'm going to call this right here. There we go. I'm going to get my roly poly. Yeah, the guy came in the pharmacy. And Jerry knew he had just retired and he was all excited and he was going to fish and go camping and was all excited he was finally retired and was going to get to use his boat came in the store one day wanted to know if Jerry wanted to buy his boat he said what do you mean do I want to buy your boat you're finally able to use it he said I've only got about six weeks to live lung cancer was a heavy smoker Jerry put his cigarettes down that very minute and never picked up another one and he had smoked for goodness since he was 15 to when he was 30, 15 years, not easy. All right, I'm just drawing this sleeve minus the allowance, the, the uh, seam allowance up here. Okay. And then we're going to draw this 12 inches. Get your pencil. Make sure you've left yourself room for a hem out here. All right, that's 12 inches right there. I don't know how long it's going to be down there. This from here to here now is four and a half. Four and a half. Right there. Four and a half. Right there. Four and a half. Right there. Now that should be straight. It is. Okay, so this is our straighter grain line. That's right. That is our straighter grain line right there. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to get our curve and we're just going to curve this right on out here. It goes like this. Yep, and we're just going to come right on out here. Yay! We don't want this too narrow here. But, as long as it's as thick as that, let's make sure it's as thick as that. I don't want my husband's muscles strangling. All right, it's got to be at least eight and a half inches, and it's not, so it did get much thinner. So pay attention to that. Although it is coming down his arm. Think about that, it is coming down his arm. So I'm gonna make it, because see it narrowed, eight and a half, started out at 11 to eight and a half. So that might be okay, I need to go measure his arm. But I am just going to put this that's seven inches. Seven and seven is fourteen. We'll see. I've got to go find him and measure his arm real quick. So we're going to use our curve. Our curve. Jerry used to have such broad shoulders. And he used to have the tiniest waist. We used to buy him shirts. And I had to um, taper his shirts because they were just so big. It looked like he had a full skirt tucked into his pants. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. Okay, sleeve. We're going to make a straight of grain line perpendicular to the hem. Straight of grain.
and you want the stretch going around, which of course it will be, because this is going to be on the fold. Fold. The date. Always put the date. That's your pattern number. 518.22 sleeve. There it is. I'm going to go measure Jerry's arm. Make sure that 14 inches is enough to go down around him with some ease. 12 inches down from the shoulder line of the shirt. And then I'm going to cut out this sleeve. I'm going to cut out this shirt. And I'm going to show you how to do a brown back correction. I'll be back. Now here's another tip. Make sure the fabric you choose out of your stash has at least as much stretch in it as what you copied. You don't want a whole lot more stretch or you're going to end up with a much baggier shirt because you have negative ease in a knit. So I took 10 inches of this and I pulled it and it went an extra 3 inches. So I take this, which is his color, it looks so nice on him, love this color on him. We're going to take 10 inches. Don't, don't take it from the side and you're going it with the stretch. So we're going to take 10 inches of this and we're going to pull it and it stretches four and a half inches. So it has a little more ease in it, but that's okay. It's a t-shirt. That one's kind of, you know, fitted a little bit on him. It's not real baggy. So that'll be just fine. So I'm going to cut Jerry out a shirt. And then I need to put some vinyl on it saying something. I wonder what I could put. What could I put? What could I put? <gasps> you said it. I heard y'all say it. I heard you. A fish. Hello. <laughs> I know you're going to ask me what paper I'm using. This is the paper that I went to Walmart and I bought when we were selling our building in Oklahoma City. And I was going to draw some patterns with Elisa from Thoughtful Creativity. I do not recommend this. It's fine for what I'm doing today. But feel. Can you hear how stiff? I don't have a scrap paper. Here's some. Feel how stiff. See? Not soft. And definitely not see-through. I can't see a thing through it. You could not use it for pattern fitting. But it's going to be fine for what I'm doing now because I'm not doing a paper fit on Jerry. But what I want to show you, I promised you I'd show you how to do a round back. Now we know Jerry's round back starts at the neck and goes down to about here on him, down where my bra is. It was like 12 inches. So, I could cut just one dash across there, one cut, or since it's big, it's an inch and an eighth, I think I'm going to cut three. Cynthia Guffey, she is now deceased and in heaven. But Philly and I learned this in one of her classes, and we came right home, right here to here, and we did it to each other. So this is how we learned it. Now, turn your pattern so the center back faces you. I'm going to write on here, center back. Center back. Center back. You want to cut from the back. Write this down now. You want to cut from the center back to the side seam or to the armhole. You're going to start at the center back and go across. You are going to stop cutting when you get to the seam allowance. Now my pattern doesn't have a seam allowance on it because I just cut it out. So let's um, put a seam allowance. Half inch is what I'm using. You don't have to use a half inch. You can use whatever you want. Nobody has to do it my way. But I have been asked, show us how you do it. Show us how. Show us how. Show us how. So I'm showing you how I do it. All right? This is how I do it. All right, so that's a half inch seam allowance. Try to do it straight. When you're trying to show somebody something, you're like, this is boring, I don't want them to watch this. Let's do something more exciting. So we have a half inch seam allowance on the side seam. We have a half inch seam allowance around 
the arm where we're going to sew the sleeve on, one half inch. This is center back, center back, center back, center back. Place on fold. Now this is going to all be cut up with my marks, but you get the idea. Fold. So let's take something straight and cut with it. Let's get a thicker ruler so we don't cut ourselves. Line this up straight. I'm going to start up here high because his round back is very high. So I'm going to start way up here. I'm going to cut to the seam allowance. Then I'm going to come down about an inch and I'm going to cut it again to the seam allowance. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to cut it a third time. How do you divide an inch and an eighth equally? I don't even know. Let's come down a little more because he curves all the way down to 12. So do I. Computers. <laughs> Carrying kids, computers. All right. So now you have to divide one and one eighth into three cuts or four cuts. Now we know that a fourth of one inch is a quarter inch. So I think I'll do a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, and then do an eighth. How does that sound? That sounds good to me. Am I down 12 inches yet? No. So I'm going to do five cuts. You can do just one cut. You know, I should do an experiment <clears throat> and do one cut and compare it to five. But this is what Cynthia did. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do one more. Just to spread it out evenly so it's not just a not just a circle, a half circle in one place. Now, cut across your seam allowance where your cuts are. Because you've got to have a hinge. Hinge duty. Y'all have seen me do this so many times. Alright? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take some paper. I'm going to get some green paper. Hold on. I'm getting some green paper. You want me to re rearrange my camera so you can see down on my table? I've got five cuts here. So we're going to do a quarter. I hope I have enough paper. I think I do. We're going to do a quarter. We're going to get some kind of a measuring instrument to make sure it's a quarter. We're going to get some tape. When you're going to learn how to fit patterns, buy yourself 25, 30 rolls of tape. I'm serious. <laughs> Takes a lot of tape to do fitting. Now I'm going over here exactly at the center back and I'm adding one quarter inch. One quarter inch right there. Now when Peggy does this, she makes one cut, even if it's a big fat one and a half inch, she makes one cut. But this is the way I'm going to do it. Now out here you'll see these in your seam allowance. They'll overlap just a tiny bit, but not much since I'm doing such narrow cuts, such narrow expansion joints. These are expansion joints. How about that? That's a good name for them. Expansion joints. All right, quarter inch. Looks like I'm going to run out of paper here. Quarter inch. So now I have almost an inch in here. Quarter inch. Now I need one eighth of an inch. Now this is going to really make my pattern look crazy. One eighth of an inch. That's not very much. One eighth. And that's a very tiny. One eighth. Now tape everything. Oh my goodness. Tape it, tape it, tape it. You don't want to use that hard paper. Although this will make a nice sturdy pattern. Peggy has these things like the professionals use where you just put a hole in the top of your pattern papers and you hang them all on a hanger. And she hangs them. She has a closet in some bedroom where her son moved out. And um, she hangs them all in there in numerical order. Yes. It's very good. I should do that actually on these that I make myself. That would be nice. I might do that. I think that'd be a fun new project. Do you see the tape going down? 
Why did I cut one long piece? Because it wants to make the paper jump up and attach to it before you're ready for it to. It's crossing over just the tiniest bit out here on the seam allowance. But that's not going to matter. Sleeve will go right in. Now look at that sway, honey. Look at that sway. This is going to look so good on him. And his back won't even look bent anymore because his shirt won't be strangling him in the front. I may end up sewing for Jerry and not me from now on. <laughs> I love to sew for other people. I really do, especially if they want me to. You know, you don't want to sew for somebody if they don't want you to. So you see here on the back, I now have this big piece of green paper. And on the front, I now have all of these little insertions. And the back of the pattern, instead of being straight, is now curved. Because that's what Jerry is. He's curved. Now, does that mean I can't place this on the fold? No, it does not. What you do, can you see? What you do, here, here's the center back I'm placing on the fold. Play like this blue line right here is the center fold of the fabric. You take the top, can you see me here? You take the top and you put it on the fold. You come all, you come all the way down to the bottom and you place it on the fold like that. So, you are still going to cut this on the fold. It's still going to cut out straight. Are we going to get a little extra? No, we're not going to get a little extra anywhere on him. I have a sway back. And when you do a sway back correction, it comes in and makes you have more material, more ease. The round back goes out and causes you to have less fabric. Now, if you want to, you can measure how much this is, and in this case it is 3 8 inch. It's 3 8 inch. Now you, you can cut this with a seam, no problem, but add a seam allowance to it. If you're going to cut this to sew it together with a seam, to sew this hump into it, sew it with the seam down the back, but I don't think men are going to want a center seam down the center of their t-shirt. So what you can do is you can come over here and you can add three eighths. You can add three eighths right here to the armhole. See that? You just take some paper, put it over here, and since this is three eighths, mine usually comes out about an eighth, but since this, his is three eighths, I am going to add it over here. How much does it take out down there? It takes out some about down there too, so I'm even going to add a little under the arms. So right here's where it came out. Right here's where I'm going to add three eighths, and I'll just draw a new armhole, and that will give him plenty of room. How much up here did it change? About the same. About the same, but none clear up there. Yeah. So, yeah. Took out quite a bit, actually. So I'm just going to change this. 3 eighths, 3 eighths, 3 eighths. Right there, too. Pretty far down it did this, y'all. I think he would be best with a center back seam, but he's not going to like that. So I'm just going to add this on in the armhole. We'll see how it works. Add this extra fullness because he's not going to want a center seam down his back. I just know it. I just know it. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to add. Hold that. Hold, hold, hold. Hold, hold, hold. Right here we are about a quarter inch. Yeah, that's about a quarter inch, so that should be more than enough. like that and then we'll just blend it we'll do blending duty blending duty back into like that all right so now we have more for his chest and straight down you could make this straight down if you wanted to it's a t-shirt it's a t-shirt it's a t-shirt it's a t-shirt <laughs> let us remember it's a t-shirt 
All right, so I've made the armhole a little wider to make up for what I'm taking out of the center back. All right, so I have extended that for his center back correction. There we go. You want to see it? There you go. Over here is where I added to the armhole to add back in this width here that's going to be taken off because I'm going to make that a straight, a straight cut. You want to see? There's my ruler. I'm going to show you how much here we're going to lose if we place this on the fold. Okay? So that's how much. I'm going to color it with blue so you can see. Now down here at the bottom, I could just go ahead and add more ease all the way down the side, and I think I will. Because the shirt, can, the, he's got a shirt on now that's twice as big as this one around him. There you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this little add-on here that I did at the side, and I'm going to add it the whole way down. That's what I'm going to do. I'll come back when I get this shirt done. Hey everybody, Joy here. <laughs> hey everybody, Jerry here. <laughs> I'm not used to that introduction. <laughs> so here's the deal, Neil. We started this video the other day, and I told you how I've been watching Jerry choke, 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 choke for years on his t-shirts. And of course, being somebody who has to fit myself for that very reason, I've wanted to fix it forever. And he never did want me to sew for him. I don't know why. Why didn't you ever want me to sew for you? I have no idea, Joy, honestly. <laughs> you know, reason? I don't know what you'd sew, honestly, other than t shirts. You think that's the only thing I can make is a t shirt? No. Watch him get himself in trouble. <laughs> I'm through. <laughs> anyway, the t shirts never bothered him. That's why. And he has like 500 of them. And it just didn't bother him that they cut him off at the throat, but it bothered me. So I guess, you know, we're retired, we sold our businesses, we have more time. And he finally said, well, okay, fine, make me a t-shirt. So here it is. You know, this is how I keep them. How did I make my pattern? I took the t-shirt he had on that you just saw at the beginning of this video. And I put it down on the table and I showed you how I made it. So this is what I have now. You can see this is the back of his t-shirt. You can see all of these cuts. And all of these cuts made it so the t-shirt would go up, 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 up to his neck in the back and stay there. You can see all the green paper on the back that I added. And then the front, I didn't do anything to. The front is fine. He doesn't have a round front. Well. Not as round as mine, let's put it that way. <laughs> no, you don't get to agree no. with that. <laughs> Sweetheart, you don't have a round front. <clears throat> so anyway, this is the front. But you can see, the only, I didn't have to do a full bust adjustment. <laughs> I didn't have to do a sway back adjustment. I probably could do a forward shoulder adjustment. And I might on this one. And all that means is that I will raise the shoulder seam right here. I will raise it up maybe a half inch in the back to nothing here at the neck and then the front I'll do the opposite to. I'll lower it a half inch over here on the shoulder up to nothing at the neck and that will bring this seam. See it's right at the neck almost not quite but it's still pretty far back here on his shoulder. So another that means he would need two things round back and forward shoulder. All right, so I want you to see how nice the front is on him. I'd say it's pulling just a tiny bit into his neck. Mm -hmm. Let's turn around and look at the back, babe. Show him the very, very back. Now you can see the back. Compared to the wrinkles in that first shirt, there's hardly any. But how do I know if this is perfect yet or not? The seam right here at the top of his 
shirt here at his neck bone. This is his neck bone. This is where his shirt should come to, right here. It's still down here. So if I measure from here to this neck bone, let's do it. Let's measure from here to that seam. And we get, let's move the little hoozy up to watch it. We get, woo, an inch and a quarter. An inch and a quarter. So that means we need to move the back up still to about there. See here, now we've got all the wrinkles again. If I put the back of the neck where it belongs, see it wants to be back here is where it wants to be and everything looks pretty, but if I put it up here where it belongs, then we get all of these wrinkles again. So shirt number two is going to have, I'm gonna put an extra inch. I'm gonna put an extra inch in the round back and I'm gonna make shirt number two. And isn't this exciting because you know why? Are you excited? Because <laughs> I cut his hair, y'all, so I'm always messing with his hair. Okay. Uh, this means that like Keith and Becky, Keith goes to the quilt shops with Becky now because Keith makes quilts now. I don't know if I'll ever get Jerry to make a quilt, but if I'm making him t-shirts, he'll want to go in the material store, the fabric store, and pick out the colors that he likes so I can make him a whole bunch of t-shirts, right? Right. Does that sound exciting? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a brat. Just telling you the truth. So you don't care what color I make your shirts? Well, shirt? I do. Yeah, I don't want pink. Okay, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Orange. No, no, no. I want things to go well with my skin color or whatever. But. See? Now this, when I move the back forward, this will stay down here and it'll quit hitting him. This shouldn't be hitting him up here in his throat. So, we're going to do number two. Let me see. How about red? Do you like red? Red's fine. I could make you a red one, but not pink. Pink is out? No, not pink. <laughs> not orange. No. Is that the only two colors? I don't know. I could probably think of others, but not right now. No florals? No florals, please. Stripes? No stripes. No please. stripes, no florals. Boy, we are narrowing it down. Polka dots? No. Lord, no. <laughs> not polka dots. <laughs> We better stick with solid. Just plain colored shirts with maybe some logo, fish logo, oh. or sports logo, or something. Oh, scan and cut time. Yeah. So. All right. Okay, babe. You can just wear it. It's just a t-shirt. You can just wear it, get it dirty, whatever now. And I'm going to make you number two. Okay. All right? You can go. All right, guys. You yeah. can go. So, I'm not going to start all over. I'm going to use the same exact pattern. Now that seems like a really extensive round back. I know. And actually another thing I could do is just raise it right here. Judy Kessinger does it that way. I think maybe Glenda Sparling does it that way. She just raises it right here and draws it over to the shoulder. But I don't know. I think I'm going to make it up higher here and maybe cut it into the shoulder and raise it because another inch is quite a bit, quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this today. Oh, uh, probably be a week or two before I get him another one made because I've got three tops to make for myself today. But I knew you all would be so excited that I'm finally sewing for Jerry. So I wanted to show it to you. All right, bye for now.